definitely taking the game to NIP here. And if it weren't for the Zist round and the 2v5 pistol, you know, who knows what would have happened. Yeah, they are very smart gods. And when they actually decide to just stack something as well, you saw the three on five that they ended up winning. Uh, but actually, I was actually talking to, to Delbok, obviously, an old teammate of, of Pronax, because I want to figure out what does RDL do within this team. And apparently, he's more of a, the, the analyst, making sure that he has all the screens. So if Pronax makes a call to everyone, everyone does everything correctly. But you see there that, that round number 29 that cost God sent the game. You were talking about the pistol as well. Uh, Oh, you do have that, okay. Yeah, yeah, but that, that one round there, you saw there, miscommunication. That just comes into inexperience. Out of, there were five clutch situations that game, and IP won four of them. Gaston only won one. And uh, if that's the round, Yanko's going to break down. While Yanko's walking over, why don't, yeah. you set the, why don't you set the scene for us? No, I, I mean, that, that situation in general, like, Gossant were in the, in the dumps. They decided to ro rotate back. Schneider did a good job in, in you know, clearing the, the B-bomb site. And then you had there, we were talking about Exist. Smart player, one on two, ending up getting the one on one duel, ends up winning the round. So, yeah, Yanko. I mean, yeah, as Robin pointed out, it was the 29th round, and it started up by, you know, having some exchanges towards long. This is where Forrest gets a double kill, but this is a great example of where I think it was either Pronax or Schneider who, who made the call that those mid round calls that we were talking about. So, we can roll the beginning of the clip. This is where the exchange itself happens. This is what forces NIP players to rotate as well. We can stop it here. So basically, this is where you can see what happens. Pith is the last player who is towards B. He's rotating to it. There are a lot of smokes here which obstruct vision for Getra to exist. So they don't really know what's happening. They're expecting the godsend players to keep pushing, but the position from Schneider here is really relevant. He's really deep towards the B bomb site. And as I said, it's maybe him, maybe Pronax saying, okay, guys, let's rotate towards B. The bomb was left. Uh, at the middle of the map for the whole time, so maybe that was their plan for the beginning. And this is a great call because we can play it play it out further. Because as you can see, NIP isn't expecting this at the point. Schneider gets really deep into the bomb site. He gets a kill on Pit, who isn't even expecting it. And then it gets to we can pause it again. So now it gets to a situation where Exist is left in a 1v2. There was a, a quick exchange of frags in the end. And now this is a really good spot for for Godsend. The problem is I think that a little bit of pressure and miscommunication got to them because as you can see there is the, the Molotov here and which kind of forced Pronax to move real fast to go for a really fast peak and Schneider isn't in a position still to trade it and he doesn't have the angle on Zist here as you can see. So right now what this allowed Zist to do, he has two 1v1s, first against Pronax and then against Schneider who's gonna pick him and this has a, a, an amazing round here, wins the round for his team, which propels them to win the whole game. But, you know, if maybe Pronax was just for a split second more patient so that Exist would actually push through the door itself and then maybe him and Schneider could play it in a 2v1 rather than two 1v1s, basically. And other than that, though, Pronax has already showed us so much, right? Like. It seems that already with a team that's been together for about four months, we're seeing really solid signs that, it, that whatever Pronax seems to touch does eventually turn to gold as these names that we kind of, we, we, we doubted as you would when they're, they're, you're not, they're not recognizable going up against the likes of NIP. But already good signs from God's center. I think that's something we already are learning. But Train is next. They haven't managed to pick up a win in the uh, initial map on Cobble. What are the chances coming into this one? I know that the veto kind of was a little alarming to you, Duncan. What, what did you have to say about Train? I think they were win train. I think that's the one that actually in the in the games I saw beforehand, they looked pretty solid on, like they had a decent CT side. And then on T side, actually they had some good ideas. I remember against Navi, that was early on in the tournament, obviously they, they kind of struggled to actually execute the ideas. They had good 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 concepts, good reads, but they didn't have the play initially. Now it looks like most people are warmed up in terms of like their aim, etc. In that game, Twist and Lecro were going off. My big concern for them is that Again, now that Nips won the first map, they don't have to win train. They sure. can afford to go. Therefore, they can play a lot looser. And the big problem, the, gi the gift I thought that Nip gave to the guys from God Center to potentially win map one is that Get Right and Forest combined at like 20 something kills. So that's probably not going to happen in terms of those two players. So it's going to mean those same star players for God Center have to be on fire if you want to take this map, I think. Robin, you're the only one that didn't expect God Center to pick up a map. Why is that? No, I mean, I mean, Duncan just, uh, as well. yeah, and Duncan said 2-1. But I mean, as Duncan was saying here, Gonza was this close to winning this map with Get Rider Force not showing up. We're talking about Train here. You saw Force yesterday. If these two players show up, 
again, I don't see Godsend uh, coming home with a, with a map win here. They played great on Cobblestone, few few mistakes here and there, lost clutches, uh, but overall gr good approach. But I think on Train here, even though this is their map, you saw there, I mean, if, they, if the communications is not there, what you saw on day one when Godsend, Godsend played Navi on Train, if they don't have those executes um, completely unlocked on 100% accurate in, in terms of comps, they will just get demolished here. Some belief growing for Godsend, though, coming into this one, just finally from you, Yanko. I believe that the manner in which they lost this map is going to affect them greatly, being as a, some of the players being inexperienced is going to be probably really hard for them to reset after a loss like that, and I would expect NIP now to, to close it out 2-0. I don't know, man. Let's not forget they are Swedes, who so just seem to, like, get 1v5s and just kind of go... Little sm slight smile, little crack, like exist 1v3s. Not, you can't even see a, a speck of emotion on that man's face. Maybe maybe the same can be said for God's sake, because it is time for Train. We're about to be diving into our second map in the second semi final of Dreamhack Masters Malmo. It is on Train. The desk has some belief in those slightly lesser known Swedes, and we're going to be finding out how it does go down. Moses and Metis are standing by to bring you all of the action. Before we do go, though, the score esports is something that I'm going to be telling you all about. You've got news, articles, the whole shebang, all available in the palm of your hand. You can grab it on your smartphone, on iOS, or Google Play. Play. I could do this in my sleep now, uh, so do be sure to I'm check asleep. that out. The stats and everything there, so you go check that out while Moses and Metas go guide you through a map train. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Alex. I, I love that. See ya from Thorin just ya. at the end. Brilliant. We yeah, are back now. Stuff. Yeah, and uh, I thought the I thought the desk was actually very very accurate in what they just said that that match was. That you could see a lot of. Um, maybe not a lot, but the crucial rounds that came down to uh, the pistol round, for instance, the inexperience of, you know, with the bomb, just losing track of who has it, running in towards murder hole uh, was huge. Also, that last round was just inexperience and, and communicating together as teammates. It's been a while since Pronax and Schneider played on a, on a team. Um, so, all together, I mean, it was sick to what we saw God send this inexperience, this new team taking it to NIP like that. They weren't scared at all. That's very true, and as I said before, I thought it was pretty ridiculous that we even got to a 16-14. I thought this would be a very one-sided best of three. I thought NIP would take it 2-0, oh. but again, completely wrong. It's, it's, these, it's these regional matchups, you know, especially yep. in Sweden. They're always, always a battle. I mean, even when NIP was, was struggling, when they weren't in this kind of a sick form, they were still able to, to have some really, really good performances against Fnatic when they were at their top strength. So, I mean, these, these Swedes just love battling each other, um, and it's always good stuff. But here, I mean... That first map doesn't get much better than that. On train, though, a map that both teams, I mean, you could tell Godsent, they like to play it. They played it against Navi and NIP have a couple of really, really good wins on it. So this map especially is going to be a good battle, a good duel between the two sides. It's got to be said that Pronax has these guys playing very well, getting very creative with some of the tactics that they're, tactics that they're pulling up. I mean, that, that pistol round, the open and the CT pistol round on Cobble, where they had that crossfire set up, perfectly oh, red. Yeah. Uh, just slaughtered NIP, you know, some of the boosts, some of the taking the fights to NIP, getting them out of their game, uh, was really, really cool to watch on Cobble. Yeah, Lecro just peeking it, pulling back, and they had the two players just holding outside of mid. It was really actually beautiful to watch. Train, a map that well, we saw Nip play yesterday, had a very solid T showing there. CT side did have a few holes in it, so I do worry a little bit for them. But ladies and gents, here we go again, back on, live into the server, Nip versus Godsent. All on the line in the semi-finals. Winner of this progresses through to face off against Na'Vi. Aggression towards box halls. Godsent trying to gather a lot of intel. So this is going to give a quick flank towards this outer train yard. Here comes the hit. Hits the first one out. Oh, Twist eats a ball to the face. He's got to play a little bit passively. He's got one close up on Ivy, and he's going to fall here. Exist finds that. The hero of the last map. He opens things up on train. Yeah, just too many plays to watch out for there. From Twist's perspective, Pronax is going to answer back with his USP bomb. Has been planted. There's Pit right up in the grill of Pronax and is going in the way very convincingly of NIP. Schneider may have a couple things to say about that with his USP, however, or not. He gets silenced. Yep, right, is that 1 0 NIP. So many positions that Nip was playing in that outer yard. Just one kill opened up so many possibilities for him. It's kind of the danger of devoting so much manpower towards that interplay. Two players getting aggressive towards box halls. They don't find anything, but. With only three players outside initially, the, the Godsend had to play it a little bit more passively. They couldn't take any risk at that outer train yard, and Nip could set up very nicely in the post plant. P250, Steagle in the hands of Godsend. I saw them land a bunch of frags. 
let's move on cobblestone and ip have themselves quite a, a healthy dosage of smgs here actually just the one ak-47 in the hands of exist who's consi consistently i should say running with that over on cobblestone Set up for yeah, as well. a, a trademark uh, anti-eco here for NIP, playing it very, very far back, not getting caught off by any kind of aggression. Once again, I and mean, this is something I touch on when, when we see it in, in some of these matches, these SMG buys allows for so much utility, so many nades, so many Molotovs that can clear out spots, prevent you from taking damage from certain angles. So the biggest worry for NIP at the moment is that player in ladder room, which could catch him off guard, but a pop flash might be able to help out. Twist is looking away from it. Oh, and he turns back. He gets the first kill. Can't get pit. Great trade, all things considered, though, from Twist's perspective. Can the rest of his team hold strong? Three players now moving away onto A. Meanwhile, it's powerful, I believe, is going to be coming up from behind, so NIP need to get onto this site. They have got the bomb planted. Schneider, close range, not able to connect the dots, and he will fall down, leaving Pauf. Goes right into the slaughter. NIP a comfortable 2-0. And that's how good the utility can be. The, the wall of smokes in front of the train and then just bomb Molotovs and HE grenades onto the bomb train, behind the bomb train. Brings Lecter down to three HP, so just softens him up for when they eventually get into the duel. Nicely handled from NIP. Only losing one member. Small investment from uh, Godsend into this round. But not too much to worry about. And here's Get Right. Molotov is out. He doesn't commit to it, though. Twist back in the ladder room as well. Still a MAC-10 and a UMP in the hands of NIP, so farming frenzy potentially on the cards. Godsent have just the one smoke as well. You can see how aggressively now Godsent is playing towards this choke point. They know that if they let that execute happen again, they want to get in front of the smokes, in front of the nades that are going to be raining out, in front of the Molotovs so they don't have to worry about that. So they're going to try and be a little bit creative, a little tricky on Freiburg if he wants to push forward at any point into this choke point. But Nip at the moment relocating out towards box halls. Good patience so, shown so far from NIP. The flashbang goes into ramp. No one's home. Valve playing a position we saw Taz on a lot yesterday when Nip were playing against VP. Only a P250, though. If they don't check that spot, it can still be deadly close range, so you need to be careful. We've already spoke at length about how good their anti ecos are, NIP, so you don't feel like they should be losing out on this opportunity. Yeah, and they're just going to wheel their way out. Palf hasn't even shot a bullet quite yet. Going to get on top of the train. It's only one member. It's only Get Right at the center bomb site. Oh, and he gets dinked, but he does find the kill. And he's trying to fall back, but he's going to be caught out in the open. But Pronax misses all the shots. He cannot handle it. Lecro finds the kill, but Get Right with two with the MAC-10. Freiburg holding down the flank as well. It should be pretty textbook from NIP from here. The bomb's still not planted. But there's no avenue for Twist and Lecro to get back into this round. How is Get Right still alive? <laughs> Nobody knows. That was ridiculous. Two P250s all remaining away for Godsent. Bomb planted on the B side, of course, and Lecro doing what he can, just trying to be a pain in the rear end for NIP. So you can get a couple of kills. Get right still extremely low. Finally gets finished off. Just a MAC-10 in his hand, so it's not the worst weapon to lose. Is expendable. Can trade that across to the AK in the next round, no problems. Lecro however, will be able to pick this up and see if he can do some more damage. P250 at this range, maybe. Able to get them headshots in. And yeah. Twist saving the P250. Yeah, he oh. just concedes that battle out towards the inner, inner train yard. Tries to relocate to get an exit, but no one from NIP is going to go that way. So the bomb does explode, as do the pyrotechnics. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. I wonder how clearly that's coming through to the, uh, the guys at home watching this. I'm sure they're showing it on stream. <laughs> Why not? 3-0 for NIP. They get off to a good start. Like you said, this was the terrorist half yesterday that was so effective against Virtus Pro. One of the ways they did it was by really, really taking advantage of that inner bomb site, changing the pace, changing the execute, sometimes just walking out with no smokes, no, no indication they're coming. Here's the big thing, and this is... Ooh, Pronax gonna get aggressive right behind the smoke. NIP, they're waiting for it, and they punish him. He did do that in some of their train matches earlier in this event. So NIP very obviously doing their homework. They see that smoke come out, and they're waiting for that angle from Pronax. That's very true. We did this time and time again, pushing up Ivy. So NIP clearly doing their research. Actually threw a grenade in first that chunked him down significantly, then finished him off through the smoke. So Godsent, who we're saving for this moment, have already conceded the first frag that puts them on the back foot instantly. Look at the read, though. Pronax falls, and instead of rotating someone outside to help out, they wrote an extra player. They rotate an extra player inside. There was three players from Godsent here. Palf is trapped, though. He's got to have support from his teammate, or he's just going to fall eventually. Molotovs are protecting him for the moment. Smokes are out. There's the Molotov. Spray through the smoke. 
Palf does fall. It's just down to one player from Godset at the center site, although Schneider has rotated over, and that was a weapon on Cobble. Schneider's AWP was the biggest advantage they have because no one from NIP could silence it. Here on train, if that stays true, that could be how Godsent gets into this. That's a very good point. They'll be looking at Pit and potentially Forrest to try and pick up that AWP and wield it against him. Still has his sights trained onto Catwalk. Meanwhile, left row trying to hold down the site. Schneider is the first player to step up, and they nearly lined up for him for a two for one. It's going to be a bit worrying for NIP right now. And there's another frag for Schneider, finally gets picked off from Forrest, and it's all on twist as he be pushing through the smoke. Both players fairly low as well. Spots the first one, spray down in effect, and he's got a kit as well, so now Pitt is in all sorts of trouble. He's going to be hiding back. He doesn't have a molly, which typically you want to have in this kind of situation from a T's perspective. Twist comes down, going to be tickling the bomb, trying to force out Pitt, and there's a headshot. Pitt completely outplaying him. NIP take their fourth consecutive round. The economy for Godsent has been broken. Yeah, what a smart play from Pitt in the one-on-one, -on -one, using that bomb perfectly. So they do go up 4-0. It is going to be back on the pistols for the Godsent side. And this is one of the ways that MIP beat Virtus Pro is towards that, towards that inner bomb site. They were just so effective. And you can see there, they get a couple kills, they get Pronax out towards Ivy. That just weakens the defense, and they can slowly constrict on that inner bomb site. That might actually be the read that Pronax had, seeing how much they favored it in that matchup last night. You know, just gambling for, for a rotate over to get an extra player just doesn't work out into that round. Yeah, so close yet so far. After conceding the first kill, they managed to nearly bring it back. Just pistols this round now, for God's sake. Very forward defensive positions, though, with these pistols. So, hoping that NIP walk out and hang themselves in this situation. But no such luck. And NIP is so patient, these anti-eco. It's one of the reasons they're so solid that they're not going to give anything away for free. Yeah, you'll notice, I mean, NIP, that their first line of contact on these anti-ecos is always, it's never the player who's alone. If a player who's isolated on NIP gets into the first battle, it's because it was brought to them by the CT side. And God sent right now, they have no indication this is coming. Three members of NIP just walking, strolling out of Ivy, essentially, and they're going to have just a free, free turkey shoot out here. No one looking this way whatsoever. The AK-47 from Forrest, it's going to get that first gun. Get right, actually, and then Forrest gets another. Pronax caught off guard. They have the outer bomb site. Rotation quickly down ladder from two members of Godset, but Forrest is going to go for one more. He wins that. And instead of going down ladder, Lecro and Twist, they're going to push all the way through White Halls. They're going to try and get some exit kills, but Freiburg is already on top of the spots. One out. Can't get the kill, but now he has the knowledge. Knowledge is power, but Freiburg's unable to actually convert that. Lecro is down to 2 HP, though. Punished shot from Freiburg. Twist is going to get the only kill. Actually, two kills with the CZ. So putting. A bit of pressure back onto NIP, but Pitt takes him down with ease with the AK-47, 5-0. And almost a, a complete role reversal from what we saw on Cobblestone, whereas Godsent has started out the gate very quickly. Well, now, now we need to see a response at some point. So this is where the full losing bonus is built up at 0-5, at to five, Godsent. They can have a little bit more utility. They're more than likely going to have that AWP out again. And they actually go for two. Schneider has one, Lecro has the other. Other than that, I mean, these M4s, they've got Molotovs, they've got Smokes as well behind it. It's setting up very quickly for some kind of fast outer play, but it's not coming. Three members towards the inner bomb site for NIP. Two out towards Ivy again, and it's just going to be Pronex here. So an op not over towards Ivy, at least initially. Freiburg trying to use this smoke, trying to peer around the edge of it. And there it is. Pronax wins that battle. He spots him first, sprays him down. And Palf is going to get aggressive as well on the other extremity of the map. And this could be very dangerous for NIP. It was such an important kill for Pronax to pick up originally, but he's now gone down, so that will definitely put a bit of doubt in the back of Godsense Mine as to his moment to be pushing down. Ivy, meanwhile, exists. Will open his account in this round. Very nicely done. Down to 34, but he'll take it. Two orbs in play now from Godsent, and they have one of those on the B site. There's still so much time to play with for NIP. Yeah, this is what they do. They have two picks now. They have a man advantage with a minute left. And look at all the utility they still have. So many smokes, so many Molotovs. It's going to be very difficult for these AWPs to handle if they're blocked off by the smoke, if these AK-47s can get close up. And actually, Godsense going to fall all the way back. Again, this might just be a gamble read, seeing how NIP was able, you know, favored this inner bomb site. Just saying, all right, if they come to B, we're going to take this battle. If not, we're just going to save these weapons for the next round. And they're getting fooled at the moment. This is the... Wrong read. 
could be the wrong decision as well if they decide to try and push through this smoke. Needs to be three big weapons to take through into the next round. Bomb being planted on A. And as expected, God sent the side to just tap out. NIP will pick up their sixth round. This yeah. is already getting into dangerous territory for Godsent's CT side. Yeah, the double op investment. It's just too expensive to go for this retake from Godsent. They have to bring him forward into the next round despite how heartbreaking it is for him to go down six rounds early on. So this is a, obviously a very nice opening for NIP and they're completely fooling Godsent. Question now is, with NIP's economy in such a good position, they will chase down these weapons. Will they take any away from Godsent? So much money on the battlefield right now. Twist. Could be the man that's about to get ingressed on. Bomb exists. Does get the kill. Looking for the second one onto Pit as well. We'll take him down. And so all three weapons will remain intact for God's sake. But they still trail by quite a few rounds. Yeah, plenty of money still on the NFP side. They can afford those losses. It's worth it to try and get one of the ops out of their hands. God sent another buy coming up behind these three saved weapons. And they've, they've, I mean, they've got to start getting on the board now. NIP could just yep. start running away with this. We saw exactly what they could do, and actually it's going to be more aggression towards Ivy. There's that smoke again. NIP was ready for this last time it came out. The pop flash forces Pronax back, as well as a Molotov. So if he did push forward, he would have no avenue for retreat. Luckily, that flashbang forced him back away from the fire. So he's just going to survive. He's going to sustain and fall back, play a little bit more passive. Pronax deciding to push up IV again. This could be a reoccurring theme. Desperate for information, desperate to get that opening pick. They've really been unable to do so thus far on their CT side. And there we go, they have finally got it done. And it was a clear kill as well for Pronax, only losing one health point in the process. That's a big pick. What yeah, they do with it though? It, it even looked like Force is ready for something like that. And his Pronax still wins that battle. So that's huge. Now more aggression towards the middle choke point. Freiburg's gonna have to deal with that if they decide to come out to the outer bomb site towards that A train, it's going to be a good position and it's a stack. That, that off, that bait and switch between Schneider and Twist can be very, very dangerous. Now if he's still feeling their way through, going to be going for the A set play, it would appear right now. Three smokes will be primed and tossed onto the site. Meanwhile, Pauf preemptively throwing down the incendiary onto the ladder just to make sure no one comes through the pop flash and land right in the face of the CTs, but Twist still holds formation. There's Schneider as well, great hold from Godsend, and he just got a whole lot better, Schneider. And what a way to finally get around on the board. Convincing. Well, the pop flash works perfectly for Schneider, but Twist had no issues getting that first kill, just buying time for Schneider to get unblind. And then he gets the second kill, so that stack works perfectly. All five members of Godsend survive. So money is built up. Now look at this buy. Now look at all the utility they have to utilize. Four Molotovs, all five smokes. It's one to six. So still a long way to go for them to get back into this. But initially that round looked good. Schneider misses the opening shot. There is one player of NIP pushing down these train lanes. A second one's out. Schneider doesn't even take that shot. He's still boosted up though. He bides his time. He's patient. He gets get right. And there's Freiburg through the smoke. Pronax jumps up, gets the headshot. Good start for God setting a five on three. NIP had their opportunities there. Still will get the bomb planted, but Twist meanwhile makes short work of Exist. And now on a 2v5, surely God sent clutch onto this with both hands. And there we go, Schneider will put down Forrest. Second round in a row. God sent keep four weapons alive as well. Good hold. Very, very good hold. And now the, the money situation for NIP is going to start getting a little bit sketchy. Saw the round they went chasing, they lost two extra AKs, and they've lost two in a row now. They do get the plant, which is going to help out. But meanwhile, with, with the, the two rounds that like Godsend has won now in a row, I mean, they're, they're sitting very nice. They haven't lost too many players through this little streak. And these ops, I mean, it's the same as Cobble. When is the op? Actually, it's going to be NIP on a, on a half buy here. They have Tech Nines, they have armor, they have some smokes and flashes. But these ops for, for Godset are now starting to ring in. They're starting to have a huge impact on this match, and NIP hasn't been able to counter it yet. Well, with these Tank 9s, they want to get up close and personal. Lacro through the smoke. Just pure timing shot. Pronax. And he's going to be there to pick up a second kill. Runs out of bullets. That ends his life. Now Lacro stands up, gets a second kill, and exists with a pretty ridiculous mission ahead of him. Has been spotted as well, so... Now, really, the only mission he's interested in is getting that bomb planted if he can somehow. 
It's going to be very unlikely. One's already rotated towards the inner bomb site, watching for this smoke down, and he's just going to run into his death. Nice round from Lecro. Chronax as well with two kills holding out towards Ivy. So three rounds straight now for Godsent. No bomb plant for NIP. As Godsent tries to come back into this, and this is, this is nice because Nip, you mentioned it, they had a, they had a very strong terror side last night, but the CT side was a little bit suspect. And if it's going to be a similar situation here, then Nip does not have enough rounds quite yet. Especially when you consider the break in the economy that we saw time and time again in Cobblestone, one of the reasons why Godsent were able to get so close could very well be a, re a recurring theme here on Train as well. So, completely agree. Godsent down but not out just yet. AK's in after that half by, but Pronax again gets the first kill. Look at this boost. Look at this boost twist. This is perfect. He's going to get one. He bites his time. There goes Get Right. Or no, excuse me. Get Right's the second one. He gets the trade. It's Pit who falls. It's down to a three on three, but that's a huge play. And because of how forward that battle was, Shredder's already in position to punish this. Although he's lost track of Get Right. He's snuck into the inner bomb site. Second player rotates. That's Lekra. That Molotov is going to force him away. It's burning him. It's decent damage, but. There's a kill from Forrest. The bomb is still down towards T-Spawn. So it's going to be these two ops, and NIP has to go all the way back to get that. This is a little bit of a mistake now for NIP. Double orbs, though. Again, not the easiest weapon to use in these retakes. Lecro eats a bit of damage from that grenade. It was down to 60 from the molly beforehand. Well, it's, it's, it's allowed time for Schneider to get underneath ladder, so he's going to get a free kill towards the bomb train. And even if he didn't find that, Forrest having to get back towards that bomb site, he could have just held the angle. So Forrest has a decision to make now where he thinks Schneider has rotated off to. It's a one-on-two situation, 30 seconds left on the clock. That time ticking down ever so quickly from Forrest's perspective, 20 seconds now. Has pretty much committed fully onto the B side. Both God sent players in connector, so they can wrap themselves around either side, but this bomb is gonna get planted, so this gives Forrest a chance now. Time no longer an issue, and he's gonna be playing aggressively just to start off with, holding the close angle. Molotov landed back on the site, has spotted the first player. His position has been given away to the CTs. And there, Schneider with the AK. Traded out the AWP for the AK. Works for Godsent. And that's another round on the board. That's four in a row now. Yeah, Forrest just cannot isolate any of those battles in an effective manner. So he does get, at least get the bomb planted. And with the losing bonus, NIP should be able to buy again. Unless they want to save to get the AWP. A couple of Nick fans here wanting a kiss cam. So romantic. <laughs> Nothing says romance like a nice Swedish, Swedish Counter Strike battle. <laughs> no Swedish affair here. It's been very much a, a spree map so far. Nip taking a 6 0 lead. Godsend coming back with four of their own rounds. Not a fantastic buy for NIP. A Galil, just the three smokes. And no surprises that Godsend again are going to look to push through Ivy. This time it's a two. Man, death squad, though. This is much like what they did on Kabul. Very aggressive as CT early on in some of these rounds, picking and choosing the places to take the fight to NIP early on. NIP, though, this one's very passive. It looks like they're a little bit tired of having to deal with this aggression. There's a nice pop flash, although it doesn't block Schneider's vision. He's got the angle. This is another bait and switch. Pronax is here. There's the opening kill. This offering bringing true again. Goes for a second shot, just trying to bait Force forward, and it works perfectly. Pronax gets the kill. He gets the kill, but it's such nice play from Schneider. It's such slick play there from, from Bloodstone. As another cu couple of kills go down, so get right now. All that remains, he gets picked off with these. That's a, a make or break play on Ivy. If that backfires and you lose both players, I mean, that's pretty much you done and dusted out of the round. You can see, though, I mean, Godset's being very, very smart on where they're, where they're choosing these battles, and both of the ops that round had an M4 paired with them. That fifth member was just pushed up aggressively all on his own, but each AWP has, has an M4 that it's working in tandem with, and it's so efficient. Both AWPers as well. Schneider has close to 16k. Another half buy-in for NIP with the Tech 9s. They've got a Deagle and a P250 to accompany it, and some smokes and flashes. Maybe can make a set play onto B and at least get this bomb planted, but Lecro is there waiting. Ooh, very nearly gets punished for missing that shot, but he will be able to scamper away back onto the site, keeping his AWP. If he dies there, they could have picked up the AWP, and then you really start to struggle from Godsend's perspective. So it's important he just backed away as soon as he missed that shot. It's also important he had a couple teammates rotate over immediately upon the pressure put on him, so there was enough defense there. Misses another shot, though. 
Get right challenging, being a little bit ballsy with that deagle. Steven can get a lucky headshot. The other four members of NIP have rotated all the way out of box halls. They're going to go back, find a new angle to take a fight. And here's the thing. They're believing at the moment, because they're sending two players towards Ivy, that with the pressure they put towards the inner bomb site, it would rotate and at least isolate Pronax. And actually, they're just going to spam through the smoke. I'm not sure if they spotted him, but Pronax has made that play before. Flashback comes out. Pronax completely blind. He gets punished. Here's Twist for the recovery. At least trades one out, but now the hit is on towards this outer bomb site. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind they knew exactly what was happening there. Pronax typically always pushes after that smoke lands. So goes behind it. Oh, you thought for a second maybe NIP were going to be able to get that bomb planted. It's all on pit. There's the first one. Three more players to find and frag. They all peek him at the same time. Absolutely no hope. God sent and uh, brought us back to 6-6. Six, six. That's a stellar play. Poise shown from the younger team. Going down early and now making this comeback happen. NIP has been stumped in these last, these last few rounds, so... Still no AWPs out on the T side. Which was a big, which was a big point of this of this battle that we said, that, you know, Godsent was going to have a huge advantage, and it, it's staying true here. Lecro and Schneider haven't had any pressure put on them. Some of these outer executes haven't come into play, so they haven't really been harried by smokes or Molotovs at this outer bomb site. And there it is again, Lecro chiming out. Get right falls early. Really starting to struggle now, in IP. That's going to be a worrying sign for them. They're looking to counteract that early casualty with ruthless aggression, just pushing through onto the site. Twist in heaven, going to be trying to hold this down for his teammates. Decides to come back down, spraying through the smoke, lands it onto Pit. Didn't want to hit him there. Pronax in a 1v1 duel. Freiburg's going to get the best of him, but there's Twist with one and a second kill and a third as well. And for the first time, Godsent have taken the lead on train. Suffocating aggression on the retake from Godset. As soon as those smokes start to fade, as soon as the kills start to come out and the bomb is attempting to get planted, they all swing into the site. Twist, this is beautiful. Nice kill through the smoke and then comes right around the side. Forest falls and Exist is lined up with them. Really, really good stuff from Godset. Even just the players initially defending that site, staying alive as long as they did, not committing to bad fights and allowing Twist to have that many options available to him. Twist actually got four kills in that last round. Pretty ridiculous. Single-handedly gift wrapping God sent. But here we go. Get right. And Freiburg have opened this round. Broke the deadlock with an explosion of bullets. It's been the theme of this CT side for God sent. As soon as they lose a couple players, if they're in such a man down situation, they rotate everyone over towards the B site. Exist just spraying through the smoke and get right with one more. It's a slaughter from NIP. Schneider's the last one left and he's going to fall as well. Nobody falls for NIP. And they're finally back on the board, but still, so much money on the Godsend side, they're going to have another very strong buy, whatever they need this round. There's a chant we haven't heard in a while. Yeah. Crowd getting behind. I think it's safe to say the hometown favorites. Godsend. With the double up again, though. The last round of the half. Can an IP take the lead? Of course, the first map also ended 8-7. That's been a very close confrontation between these two teams. Standard setup so far for Godsent. 3 2 formation. Not playing aggressively. We have seen sometimes with one of those orbs going into box halls and having a quick peek, but that's not going to be the case now. Schneider holding the close angle on the team main. You can feel that both teams don't want to give anything away for free right now. At least Force has that hit at EP, so at least he can challenge if he chooses to. He finds the right fight. So very, very passive. One member of NIP just now leaving T-Spawn, watching for any of that aggression. They're tired of having to deal with Pronax there. That's Forrest with the AWP. He's saying, all right, if you want to push this round, I have the best weapon to stop you. Schneider again with this angle, and this was brutal earlier. At least that time he had Twist working with him. He's not in that same position anymore. This does look like it's going to be an execute towards this outer bomb site. Molotov, that's going to prevent anyone from pushing forward while they set up these three smokes to throw. You see it's going to work perfectly. Two members are going to come down ladder. Exist is already here behind the smoke. And now they're in the perfect situation. This is exactly what an IP wants. With 30 seconds to go, though, we've had no deaths at all. All 10 players remain. It's only a matter of time before triggers get pulled. There we go, Schneider opens up the first kill. Pit straight back. Still three orbs on the battlefield. And Pit looking to push right out onto B. But Twist, again, we've seen him do this before. Sneaking his way round the back. Forrest is there. He's seen this before. He's not going to get fooled again. Pronax is going to answer back, though, retorting with a frag of his own. 
and a three on three retake. Pit is pretty low. It's doable, but it's going to be a rough ask. I just got a whole lot more possible now for God's sake. There's two kills coming. It's all on Forest. He's lining up the Molly to stop the defuse. And he's going to throw it out right now. Three orbs in play in a 2v1. Not often you see that. Bomb is getting defused right now, and he's heard that one. Peeks around the corner, but Lecro, the quintessential bodyguard, is there for his teammate. And Godsent this time will take the 8 7 lead. And he has to hit that shot, or else he falls, and Lecro is so far away that he doesn't even have a chance to defuse that. So a nice cover from the young player. Good half from, uh, from Godsent. Uh, surprising after the way that started out. They're able to come back very, very nice. All things considered, that's a, a pretty sick halftime scoreline. 6-0 yeah. behind, looking dead and buried, honestly, thinking NIP were just going to run away with it, and then all of a sudden, you've got the 8-7 lead. Those, those AWPs from the Godsend side just were too strong early on in that matchup. NIP could never get one out to really challenge it. Some of the executes weren't coming in. Some nice aggression from, uh, from Godsend over towards Ivy also gave them advantages at times, so NIP just kind of got locked out for a stretch there in that first half. And now they have to switch over to that defensive side, which was a little bit weaker yesterday. It certainly was, and I'm curious to see if God sent watch that game. I mean, surely they would have if they've figured anything out, like it's any gaping holes in this defense from an IP that they can try and exploit. Well, you definitely know they watch it just by the way that defense worked. Oh, there it is. Wow. Sweet on sweet action. <laughs> I'm not sure he was completely into that, to be honest. <laughs> I feel like we may have just witnessed a crime. Either way, here we go into the second half. NIP on the CT side. Godsent will be aggressing. One player already out on team main. The rest of the team is going to be filtering through onto the B side, which is where Get Right is waiting with his USP. Would have heard noise. We'll hear footsteps coming across. First one tap comes to fruition. Looking for a second one as well. Can't get it done. But Forrest is there, standing tall for his team. Oh, oh he gets picked off though. Long range from Twist. And that's going to make this round a little bit more interesting now. Bombs will get planted. Oh, what a shot from Freiburg. He's got a kit as well and a smoke to utilize onto the bomb. There is a Molotov on Schneider, but if that smoke is placed appropriately, that Molotov is going to do absolutely nothing. It's not, though. It's actually placed up top, so the Molotov gets to go out onto the bomb. Although it misses, it looks like. So this is a good chance here for NIP, and there's Pitt with one onto Schneider. And Exist is going to clean things out. A beautiful pistol route from NIP. The battle that Get Right takes, he gets that first kill, and then he keeps them in the crosshairs of Forest. It's a good crossfire that's set up from very, very long range. They get the opening two kills, and then the three on three is all of NIP. And that's both pistol rounds going the way of Nip. Certainly is. For God's sake, though, they did get the, the bomb down. They did, and actually they're not going to invest into this round, so they, it looks like just P250s, one smoke on a Pronax, so they might be going for a third round by, they might go for those AK-47s, but a lot of SMGs in play for NIP at the moment. Nades are going to ring out, it's a little bit off the mark, doesn't do much damage, although Twist is brought down, it's another nade that does the damage there. He's got a Deagle, but he's pretty much already out of the fight. Got to be very, very careful. It's Exist who's going to get most of the pressure out towards Ivy once the smoke clears. Important that Nip don't just win this round, but win it convincingly. Keep that economy going forward. That's one of the keys to success for Godsent on their T side. And they've already conceded the first frag. M4 as well, so couldn't have gone worse in that situation for NIP. It's just got a whole lot better, though, as Forrest steps up with the MP9. Twist and his Deagle that remains. He's managed to snake his way onto the B side, but without the bomb. Exist fell to a Glock. I'm wondering if maybe he didn't buy head armor in that round, or if he just got swarmed over. We didn't get to see the whole fight. Twist has tried to go back towards the inner site and rotate in, but again, the awareness of these experienced players. We saw it a little bit earlier when Forrest was very, very quick to watch his flank after taking that inner site. It does see like NIP knows this is a possibility. Twist. Heard those footsteps, feels the pressure, and he's just waiting. Although it looks like Get right nose as well. <laughs> the signal, I know you're there, come fight me. <laughs> and the BM. Beautiful stuff. He was having none of it. Wasn't fooled whatsoever. Riddles the corpse with bullets as well. 
A solid round overall for Nip. When that M4 drops outside of IV, I'm, I'm fearing the worst for an IP there. I thought it could have gone really sketchy real quick. It absolutely could have. If Protoss was able to get that second kill out towards Hell, I mean, that, that's where it starts to get really dangerous because then a lot of opportunities open up for those P250s and Deagles to really go to work. That flank becomes more of a factor. No AWP out this round for Godsend, but there's still a couple SMGs in play. Pit has the UMP, get right on the P90. There are some advantages for Godsend. Although there's the opening kill. Get right finds Pronax early on. Schneider trying to get on top of the train to spot anything. He's not going all the way up. He just wants to get intel. He's just trying to see if he can spot anyone from NIP to tell his teammates where exactly they are. But there he is. He springs. Twist gets one. Schneider falls. Forrest responds on Electro as well. Three on two now. Oh, it's now three on one. It's all on power. First kill comes down. A lot of time to play with. Bomb just behind him. So as far as 2v1s go, one of the better situations you could find yourself in. Problem is that he's not entirely sure these last two players are. He's going to have to go walk about now and try and find something out. Some information is key. Now, oh, just as he turns, he gets peeked from Freiburg. So unfortunate. But NIP will take that. God sent unable to pull the trigger just yet on their T side. Big round for NIP sustaining in that first gun round with the SMG. So they get some upgrades. They don't have to spend as much economy. And now they can say they're in the driver's seat here. It's going to be back on two pistols. At least they have armor. The Tech 9 purchases a lot of utility. Godsend is fully invested into this round. This could give NIP a, a very strong grip on this map and the series in general if they're able to win this one. Yeah, this could propel them through to a 12 8 scoreline, maybe even 13 8. So this is a pretty massive round for Godsend. They've got a lot of utility, four Molotovs in their hands. And smokes behind it. Oh, this is a big power play from Godsent. NIP's weaponry is solid. They've got plenty of grenades still. They've got diffuse kits. I do fear a bit for Godsent here, but I say this would be a, a massive blunder if they lose this round. Well, it's going to be a big execution out of the inner bomb site. And if they can just get one kill here and push forward with these Tech Nines, it can be very difficult for NIP to deal with but you see how passively NIP is playing it. Very, very far back in the site. Should be able to say Molotov is going to prevent a bomb plant, so no one's going to fall initially. Rotation is on. There's Get Right controlling the spray. Finds Lekaro up top. Not very much damage taken, but there it is. Godset trying to push forward, trying to swarm up behind the smoke, but Freiburg ends it. One on top of the train. That's Pronax. He gets the first kill. There's a trade, though. The rotation is already in. The backup is here for NIP. Schneider gets a chance, but he falls as well. It's just down to Palf in a one on four. And what can he do? Well, there's the issue. Tech Nines against full weapons. Godsent had to get their opening kills and just unable to do anything. So now it's all on Pauf. The bomb is getting diffused. He's going to peek out, but it's too late. And Nip will take the 11-8 lead. Well, at least the bomb plant did go down, so that may afford them to make a here. Saw a couple players on $4,000. It's a pretty cool scene. You can see yeah, it really is. Stroud has been amazing all weekend, especially during these Swedish matchups, but cell phones in the air is a nice touch. <laughs> Maybe lighting a candle for God's sake in the arena. They're not dead and buried just yet, though. All in the hands of Pitt this time. This time, the main, the main prong of this attack from God's is going out towards Ivy. Three members here. Actually, I was talking to NIP earlier today, in fact, you know, talking to Forrest. This Ivy is, is a place where they have a lot of different tactics to defend against it. It is kind of a big, big point, big point of importance on this map for NIP. That's where they want to control the most. So it's certainly going to get tested here at the moment. Three players coming through Ivy from Godsend. The last two looking to push down ladder and team in respectively. The flash is going to come in exist. Oh my goodness, this should be like shooting fish in a barrel. Two kills for him. He runs out of ammo, but the damage has been done surely. Bomb drop, but Lecro can't get his hands on that. Meanwhile, Freiburg and Forrest stand up. Knocking God sent down. Lecro, good luck to you, sir. He's uh, also getting burnt alive. Sad times. How many big plays is Exist going to make for his team? That was a huge pop flash. Gathering the intel and getting two kills. This completely ruins anything Godset wanted to do. It's a beautiful play. Twist falls there. Schneider right after. So we talked about the kind of big lead that NAP was going to have by winning that Tech 9 forced by that investment from Godset. Especially the round immediately afterwards. NIP is definitely in the driver's seat here.
Just perfect timing on that exist. Pop flash into the peak. It's worthwhile just throwing it out there on the off chance that someone is stood there. And well, he got lucky, didn't he? Three players stood right next to him. God sent a tactical timeout, understandable. Try and regain some momentum, just try and figure out what's going wrong. Yeah, this does not look like the CT side that that the uh, that MIP played yesterday. Also doesn't, to be fair, it also doesn't look like the, the Virtus Pro, the, the terrorist side that we saw at a Virtus Pro. So I mean, yep. there, there's a lot of differences here. And God sent, I mean, this is a this is a young team that has to make a big adjustment here on a stage to get into the finals. So there's gonna have to uh, there's gonna have to be Pronax is really getting tested right now. He's got to find something to do. This young team, he's he's led them so well. They've acquitted themselves in this tournament very impressively, but it's a tall task now to make this comeback against such an experienced squad. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Moses. Godsent haven't won a single T round so far. I believe you are correct, actually. So, NIP putting a lot of those doubts to rest. Godsent have had opportunities. They managed to get onto the site. They managed to get the first couple of kills as well, but they've just done nothing with it. And that's been a reoccurring theme for them. So just putting their heads together right now, figuring out what's going wrong. Good luck forever. Forever's a long time. It's pretty long. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's also a situation now where, you know, we, we saw the, how effective the ops were on the CT side of train for Godsent. We haven't seen them too much on the Terra side. And now the crowd's getting into it. It's a beautiful sight here in Malmo, filling up the arena for the hometown teams. You Just know pistols. You know it's loud when your legs are actually like shaking. Vibrating on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you know it's pretty loud. Right, so God sent, what do you have in store? This round, it's going to be a couple of upgraded pistols and not much else. NIP still have the AWP, as you mentioned before, so maybe setting up the AWP. The thing is, though, on T side to train, it's so much harder to get those opening picks with an AWP because you're I'm only going to get a couple of opportunities to have a quick peek. This is really cool from NIP. Once they know that this is a save, once they hear the pistols, the deagles ringing out, they immediately rotate one player away from the V bomb site, and they're playing it so passively, so far back. They know the losing bonus is built up, so next round, no matter what happens, Godsend's going to have a buy. So they don't mind letting the bomb go down. They're just saying, don't lose the site, don't give over a gun, don't provide any opportunity for them to actually win the round. Just get your one kill when they enter in, and we can use all of our utility, we can use all our weaponry on the retake. Shredder has been spotted out in the ladder room, taking a little bit of a duel here, but this is all just to keep the attention of force. Get right is going to be the one under pressure initially at the inner bomb site. Heavy stack on A so far, though, for NIP. Godsent had a couple of opportunities to push through, and now the rotation underway towards the B side, playing more deep passive. They do have the range advantage, of course, right now. One of the only power plays that Godsent really have in this round is our two Deagles. Neither of them have been able to connect just yet. Looking like they're going to play down the time here. 25 seconds left. Here come the smokes on to B. And that's going to give the strat away now from NIP's perspective. And now they're going to start to push in. Three players. A fourth is going to be wrapping around the back. But meanwhile, it's going to actually be a fake to go through the ladder. Forrest is having none of it. He's going to get a single kill for himself. Twist is there with the Deagle, but a big frag from Pitt, two in fact, and he's gone in for a third. Freiburg takes it from under him. A solid round for NIP, and it looked for a second that maybe Godsent did fool them, but not the case. Yeah, really well executed fake from Godsent. Can't get the bomb planted though. I believe it was Forrest who had the quick rotate over. He does eventually fall, but he gets that first kill. He spots it all out, and then Pitt with a couple nice shots there. So 13 to eight, Godsent, they've got to get something going now. But well, this is it, right? Yeah, Before still, the tactical pause for this moment. Yep, yeah, this is the round that they discussed. Still not around yet on the T side. It's going to be Schneider on the AWP, and it's going to be a fast pace towards this outer train yard. Going for the aggression. Lecro has got a lot of real estate so far, pushing up towards the green tray. Meanwhile, Schneider has opened up the first kill. That's a big one for Lecro. Maybe Godsent finally going to get on the board. Twist also chiming in. Freiburg on the wrong side of the bomb. He's going to go down as well, and this is a very convincing round from Godsend. Finally, they're getting some success on their T side. Yeah, get right with this AK. Might be able to get a couple kills. I doubt Godsend's too, you know, too excited to go hunt this weapon down. There's no reason they don't 
They don't want to do anything to damage their economy and, and heaven forbid, lose the AWP on Schneider. That was a big factor, the opening kill of this outer train yard, which gave a lot of opportunity for Lecro to push that far aggressively. So Godsend's going to be content with what they have, which is their ninth round of this map. All five members survive as well, so they're able to build up some money to at least sustain some losses, because even if NAPE wins the next round, Godsend's going to have the money to rebuy because of so many members surviving. So this is good stuff from Godsend. It trying to inch closer, and NIP have a decent amount of money built up, but if that ever gets reset, then all of a sudden we have a very close match on our hands again. I mean, that's, that's surely the way that Godsend get back into this game from this point. They have to reset that economy. They have to knock down, nip a few pegs, stop those orbs from coming in, stop the M4s. Not going to be the case this round, at least. No orb picked up for Pit. Instead, happy enough to just keep up with the, uh, the full assault rifles. This time, a more slow round from Godsend. Didn't want to be too predictable. Stacking. Actually, NIP, NIP's money might be a little bit more precarious than we thought. They're already running low in utility. Out of smokes, they have a couple Molotovs to use still, but... Oh, Forrest, he's gonna be the first one, and he catches... Catches Twist off guard, but can't complete the kill. He falls away, he does live. Twist is brought down to 11, but Forrest is, himself is actually severely injured. That smoke and connector is at least gonna delay Godsend a little bit longer. Forrest will be very disappointed he didn't get in that kill, though. Had the drop on him. Nearly dead to rights. And look at the swap out. Schneider gives the low yeah. HP twist the AWP so that he can be more aggressive with the AK-47. That's a good trade. That's a good swap out. Twist also has the bomb at the moment. That'll change once they decide to execute. But at least initially, Pronax is going to be moving up Ivy. Additionally, we also saw Twist land some pretty crazy frags on Cobblestone with the orbs. We know he's very capable with the weapon. Exist gets flashbanged. Couldn't see a single thing. He was up to Pit to try and rescue Ivy. Not gonna happen, and now Forrest, isolated in heaven. Gonna be playing the time, 25 seconds or thereabouts left. Here come the smokes. The charge is gonna be behind it. 20 seconds now, NIP hoping, banking on Forrest to make some big plays. Gonna go for the spray. Can't get it done again for the second time in this round. Had the opportunity, but couldn't follow through with it. Freiburg now, with it all to do, Twist and Lacro are both a couple of bullets away from death, but so is Freiburg, so he's just going to back away. And because of what we said before, the economy being poor in NIP, they can't afford to throw this M4 away. That round could not have gone worse for Forrest. He had the jump on two players. He gets the dink initially on a, essentially the first bullet and just can't clean him out. He's had a very good match. He's at the top for NIP, but that round, those two kills just eluded him. Twist, meanwhile, 24 and 14 for Godsent, keeping them in this. And this is it. This is going to break the money of NIP. So Godsend's going to get up to their 10th, and essentially all NIP will have is, is more than likely this M4 on Freiburg. So this is the opportunity for Godsend to close the gap in this match a little bit. And you, you think as well, if Forrest connects the first shot onto Twist, Twist survives, he was one of the last three members, that could have completely shifted the dy that dynamic of the round. Well, you know, if he gets that kill and then, and then he gets the other one where he dinked, yeah. then that's, that's very firmly in the favor of NIP. So a little bit unfortunate for him there. They have an op on get right. He had the money for it. The rest are saving. Freiburg brought this M4 to the next round. No utility. So they're just saying, all right, get right. All right, Freiburg, see what you can do. And there's an opening kill. Get right showing off. He gets a second one as well. If Freiburg can be effective now, this would be huge. The AWP in exists. Hansi misses the flick. Palf does find him. Freiburg on this flank. What can he get done? Well, therein lays the issue. Get right gets the first two kills, but there's not a lot to support it. Freiburg's M4 comes in, can't get it done. Twist just peeks around the corner, realizing that push was imminent, and now Forrest USP. He's going to try and salvage the M4 that was lost in ladder. It's actually just outside the ladder, and again, they have their sights trained on ladder. They've seen where Forrest is. <laughs> He's trying to get his hands on a weapon, but it's just slightly too far away, and well, he had the choice of bullets or fire, and he chose the bullets. He goes down. You could that round so close to tipping in the scales for NIP. Shots from Get Right, very, very nice. He gets a little bit overextended here. If he stays behind that train, he can at least take a shot and fall back into cover, but I'm not sure. Maybe he was thinking that there wouldn't be aggression out of ladder room like that. Trying to get a new angle towards, uh, towards T choke point. It doesn't work out. 11 to 13, Nip is bought back into this. Pitt has the AWP, but it's going to be Schneider who falls. A nice shot from the ninja.
five, to, five on four now in this 13 to 11 round, crucial round for NIP. I see the bomb actually starting to come up around the back, so it looks like this is going to be a B play potentially. I think this might have been a misread as well for Pronax and Godset. You can see Pronax has a MAC-10, maybe thinking this was going to be a save round for NIP. Not prepared for that all. Maybe they call something differently. Maybe Schneider doesn't go for that battle if it's a potential to be facing an AWP. Thing is, though, three members from NIP have no head armor, so that MAC-10 could still prove to be devastating if you can get up in the face. Oh, well, their counter pass, but it is Get Right not giving them the opportunity. Second frag for him, looking for a third. Gets it as well. Huge plays from Get Right. Single handedly locking down the B site. And now Twist in a 1v5, where not a single point of health has been lost for NIP. Sick play again from Get Right. That is disgusting. Godsend has been stopped. 45 seconds left. And NIP, they'll, they'll be fine to let him save this. If he, if he wants to go sit in a corner for 40 seconds, they're not going to chase him down. They don't have the money to lose any weapons this late in the half, or in the map. So Twist is going to have to go for it. And look how passively NIP is playing. This is a very underrated kind of setup that they have going on, because normally you'd still see some players in this outer train yard overextended or very isolated based on their positioning, trying to make sure, trying to spot towards Ivy or to this T connector. But NIP is just saying, get to the bomb train. We don't care. Put the, try and put the bomb down. We'll swarm on you there. But their main goal is to not lose any weapons in this round. Plus, additionally, Twist clearly won't know this setup. So he's still looking at every corner. Bomb is going to get planted. Can he do any damage afterwards? Bomby from NIP still isn't in a, a fantastic spot, but there we go. Fireberg finishes it off. Again, they'll get right. Made a huge triple spray down on B. Stops the charge single-handedly. I mean, that Molotov he throws is perfectly timed. This is, a, this is a buy they really don't have a lot of utility. Spots that first one, maybe through a glitch in the smoke, but the other two just coming right through. Pronox and Pelf try to trade it out, and it's not working out. So get right, propels NIP to a huge round win there. And again, just a massive lead. More Ninja fans. Very coordinated signage. Here we go, round 26. NIP with a three round lead. Got sent have shown they can bounce back, and that's a great way of doing just that. Schneider with the opening pick. This allows them to now funnel their way out of team main. Forrest, again, could be the man to stop this charge. This play from Lecro was so effective earlier on. If they keep letting him get towards hell, down next to this green train, it can be damaging, but it's aggression from NIP towards ladder room. I don't think they have any idea Lecro's here. He could punish NIP so hard in this round. There's a kill from Forrest, though. Now they're going to fall back towards the bomb train. When do they realize Lecro is here? It's too late. He's got one kill, but exists with two kills. Another impact frag from Exist. Recovers NIP nicely at a three on two. Does find himself pretty close to death as well. Still two members for Godsent remaining with AKs. Pronax and Palf, but the top fragger, the talisman of Godsent, is dead and buried. That's Twist. However, the push coming in. Pronax with the bomb in hand. Going over to the A side. Player on the site itself. He's gonna go for the peak, and it's gonna be Freiburg. He gets picked off. And with Exist being low, and the bomb about to get planted as well from Pronax, surely this is gonna be tough for an IP. That being said, Pronax is low himself. Do spot themselves the player at the back of the trains. Vital information for God's sense. That was Exist. He's now gonna join his teammate, both potentially push through connection. Yeah, but Exist, I know he's low, but he's given up a lot of information. He's rotated completely off this, so Pronax, I mean, this is so deadly. Is that IP going to be expecting him to be at this angle? And they're not. They're not looking this way whatsoever. It looks like they're going to line up for him. He sprays down the first one. Huge plays from Pronax here, and Powell finishes it off. 12 rounds now for Godsent. A very important battle to win. Pronax with two huge kills at the end of the round. And that's the thing, Exist rotating back to be with his teammate. I mean, that, that's the kind of play it opens up because he gives up that control of the map. The kill onto Freiburg on the site really was the determining factor there. Freiburg holds his ground and picks up the kill onto Pronax. That's pretty much dead and buried for God's sense. So a big passage of play. And I can see NIP are reeling from that. Two max sevens in play. I mean, this, this late in the half, if this buy doesn't work out for NIP, it's going to give Godsend a great chance to tie things up and have another 14 to 14 scenario. This time they're a little bit more slow. Lecro last time was very quick. Oh, get right. We've seen this. We saw this last night versus Virtus Pro. So effective in this spot. And Palf might be the first one to walk into his crosshair. 
Get right trying to find an off angle that's going to surprise him. Again, though, have God sent read this situation they would have seen get right doing this a couple of times yesterday and Pauf just starting to just back on off Forrest has the other Mag 7 though he's down in ladder he would have heard the footsteps down looks for his opportunity does land the shot drops Pronax very low but doesn't get the kill and we've seen opportunities that haven't been finished off can come back to haunt NIP later on in the round that very easily could have been a coordinated split a coordinated pinch from get right and Forrest with the two shotguns Damage is done though, Pronax is very low. Pit being very, very patient. Almost out of utility as NIP. Two flashbangs left. And Godset, they're a little bit stuck, but that flashbang is perfect. Forrest is blind. Lecro finds the opening kill and just slinks back in the connector. Stays alive. It's a five on four, and Godset has completely readjusted their tactics. Now sending two members down towards Ivy. This is going to be so difficult. Exist. How big can you go again? He gets one kill, but he's traded off immediately. One of the remaining weapons is the Mag-7 as well in the hands of Get Right. Make it the only weapon that remains. They're trying to come in from behind, but it's just not the greatest of weapons to retake on. He will fall. And as you said before, this could be heading back to a 14-14 scoreline because Nip will have no economy to play with right now. Again, that round is just on a knife's edge, though. So many opportunities for NIP to have turned that into favor. Get Right, if he gets a little bit more aggressive, may find a kill on the Pauf. Forrest gets a nice shot with the Mag-7 in ladder room, but can't finish off the kill. And it's a really nice pick from Lecro that opens things up for Godset. And even more so, it's him falling back and just surviving to play with his team after that. So nice round from Godset to recover. Once again, showing this poise. Initially, it was going down big in the first half and recovering. And here again, NIP went on a big run, and now Godset seemed to have a feel for things. Yeah, starting off this map at 6-0 with NIP. And now are on the brink of going back to all even again. USPs across the board for NIP. Just a flashbang in the hands of Exist. It was an A stack. I'll hear the noise now over on the B side with the AK gunfire pre-firing spots, making sure no cheeky CTs are there to lock them down. And it's just going to be lining them up and spraying down with the AKs. Easy kills, easy plan, easy round for God sent. And now NIP, how's their economy going to look into the next round? I mean, you assume they're not going to have a great buy then either. Yeah, and you also, you also make the assumption, very likely, that NIP is not going to want to just give up the 15th round of Godsend, so they're going to buy into the next one. We'll have to see what they can come up with, but Godsend have put themselves, they've recovered and put themselves in a very, very good position here at the end of the second map. Exist would love to get a kill and save a weapon at this point, but he's not going to get it done. Godsend will get their 14th round. There's a little, uh, little DM of his own getting a... Uh, Trading get right for the favor. Man, this could not be closer. Both maps have gone the distance now. We have a pause, I believe, from, from NIP coming out. Yes, you're so correct. This comes down to that low economy situation where they're just they're trying to figure out exactly what they want to do with the weaponry they can buy. Threat not being the vocal one at the moment is a little bit interesting, just listening to what his teammates are saying and then providing his input. But this has been really, really good stuff from the young Swedish team of Godsent. Again, I mean, there's a lot of... I mean, there's so much experience, so much talent on this NIP team, it would remain to be seen if they would be able to bring it to them on the stage like this, and they've been doing it very admirably. Yeah, what a way to put your mark on Counter-Strike as well. Pronax comes in with a couple players that not a lot of people would have known, the likes of Lecro. Well, how cool of a storyline is this? Because the first time Pronax put together a team and came to a big event, was the very first Counter-Strike Major that he ended up winning with Schneider. So again, they have a chance here to just kind of show up and surprise everyone. They're on the brink of taking this map. This next round is not going to be a fantastic buy for NIP. If they lose that, then you're looking at potential 16-14 heading across to the Mirage. NIP know this. They're going to be trying to figure out what the hell to do to stop these pushes. Some great calls from Pronax as well in this game. Yep. The one big thing we haven't seen as well that we saw in Kabul, we, we talked about it before this map started, Kabul had a couple of those inexperienced mistakes out of Godsend, and we haven't seen those here in the, cru in the crunch rounds. Mm -hmm. In these clutch situations, Godsend is playing very, very well, very smart, and they've clawed back into this one, and it's going to be ninjas in pajamas with the weaker situation going into this next round. Godsend on the verge of taking NIP's pick away from them and bringing us to Mirage, but at least the those signs right there, I see a nip sign. A couple nip signs. 
As we mentioned before, though, whatever happens, we are going to have a Swedish team taking part in the finals against Na'Vi, who are waiting, who wrecked Envious earlier today. Envious only picked up nine rounds. That is going to be a very scary Na'Vi team for either of these teams to go up against. But into this round, this is the crucial one. Four M4s for NIP, one Famas, that's their buy. And again, it's going to be aggression from Schneider, jumping right through the smoke of the AWP, and he's gotten a good angle and misses the shot, though. During the recovery time, it's Lectro who bails him out. Again, more aggression. What? There's the trade. Oh my goodness, God sent Lecro. What a teammate there, saving Schneider's life so he can then flick onto the next player. And NIP already find themselves a player behind. Schneider's on 3 HP though. Freiburg looking to push. There's a player to his left hand side. He's going to get picked off from Twist. That could be the moment. Exist again though. No. We've seen so many times over the duration of this tournament. In these kind of scenarios, he shines. He's such a smart player. But he still has to contend with Pronax, Pauf, and Schneider. There's one dead. Get right tries to transfer a spray across to Pauf, but he's gonna be found wanting. And there's the frag from Schneider. Godsent move one step closer to equalizing this series one to one. NIP are gonna have to come back with a really poor buy up here in the last round. I don't think NIP was expecting that aggressive play from Godsent in such a critical round. They catch him off guard. And he wasn't alive at the end of it, but Lecro wins that round for his team. Saving Schneider in that initial battle allows him to have that AWP into the late round situation. Oh, and it's buy. so effective. And yeah, this buy is it's dire for NIP. There's Lecro. He had the spawn for the AWP. The Molotov is going to separate him, though. His teammate out towards Green Train. He's the only one out. That Schneider. He's got to be very careful. NIP again want to get aggressive on him. And he spots out an arm. He's going to chase it down. He's going to see him on top of the train. Pip can't do anything. Schneider gets a second kill, forced to grab two. It's down to a three on three. Three on two now as Schneider comes up on the bomb train. Three on two as he saved the weaponry, definitely in favor of NIP. Schneider switches to his tech nine. On the prowl, Freiburg with another frag that leaves Schneider. All that remains. And maybe playing hyper aggressive two rounds running wasn't the right play. It definitely appears that NIP were hoping for this. Open the hands of Exist. Crowd really getting behind their favorites right now. Schneider, is he gonna spoil a party? No, he's not. We're heading to overtime in map number two. And on one of the worst buys that we've seen in this matchup, NIP pull it off. That nip magic, two players push up close to the first train. They're able to trade out enough kills to make that round doable. Backs against the walls, they come up huge. How much must that hurt Godsend, knowing that they has a massive advantage going into that round? Schneider does everything he can there, but Forrest with those two kills at least equalizes it. And then that allows, I mean, those battles are taken early on and it takes so long to clear NIP out of those positions that the cavalry arrives. The rotations from the inner bob site come in. One thing to note though is in overtime, are we going to see the double op setups coming in? Because that in itself is quite risky from a CT's perspective. I'm wondering if Godsend is going to run that, considering that's what got them the, the bulk of their rounds on their CT side. But we'll find out the answers very shortly is Nip are going to be starting off the overtime on the CT side. Open the hands of Pit. First kill goes down. Exist is dead. And that's going to be a rough start for NIP. Looking to bounce back with some aggression towards the T main. Incendiary thrown in. HE as well. No one's home though. That's plenty of utility expended. It's not going to pay anything back. Instead of rotating to cover up Exist his fall after he falls, Ivy's completely open. NIP just pushes forward and gains territory towards this middle choke point. They do eventually rotate someone over. It's Freiburg. Get right flank the inner bomb site all alone. That Molotov lands in the smoke, though. Meanwhile, Godset, they've given up their presence towards Ivy as well. So they've rotated back. It's going to be all about this aggression from NIP. How effective is it going to be? Pitt is blind. It's going to be Forrest who gets the first kill. There's one from Pitt as well. Forrest with the second. A huge hold. But now he's stuck. Can he get this last kill? No. Pal finds it. He needed that kill desperately. That would have put Nip in a great position in the three-on-one as it stands though. 2 one 2 Freiburg spots himself. Schneider peeking through. Pauf meanwhile is trying to get worked on an E-box. NIP need to hold off for another 30 seconds. Bomb in the hands of Schneider. Started to move around. That's a big kill for Pauf. Well, 25 seconds now. Looking to actually move their way across towards the B site. The bomb is headed there. Plenty of time to get there with. Fry, uh, Freiburg is so trapped in hell. Uh, he was zoned in with Schneider on the AWP. He hasn't been able to move, and he's so scared to move out of that spot. He couldn't support Get Right whatsoever. This is a big round for Godsent. They're going to get it planted in a one-on-two. Freiburg's so far away. 
There's really not too many options open to him. And actually, it wouldn't surprise me if he decided to just bail out of this round. And maybe just pick up an AWP from his dead teammate and just save it for the next one. This is going to be so difficult. If he doesn't find a pick soon, there's almost no chance he wins it. He's got no utility. Checking every corner, as you say, is such a rough position. They've even got a Molotov as well that can just bounce off the door. No smoke to extinguish that from Freiburg. Not long for this world. Molotov lands, and there you go. That's pretty much the round secured nicely for Godsent. Freiburg's going to be going in, trying to get at least the players down with him. It's not going to happen. And IP concede the first overtime round. He will trail 16 to 15. That looked so good initially with Pitt and Forrest combining for a couple kills. But God sent to somehow recover into that round. And now, I mean, the overtime rules, you start with 10,000, it's MR3, but buying the AWP, it's an expensive weapon. And you can see three members of NIP are actually down at zero dollars. So if they lose this as well, then Godsent takes a huge advantage and maybe even 3-0, but Pitt gets him started out on the right foot. Finds that pick on a Schneider who's been a menace to NIP throughout the second half. We have seen that before from Pitt in an identical position. Been besting Schneider quite a few times. Yesterday he struggled with the AWP against VP. Get right, the lone defender on the B site for now. Godsent looking to push their way down. We saw Twist often trying to be cheeky, get around the back of the, the terrorists as they look to set up onto B. We haven't seen anything like that from NIP so far. And with the player advantage, there's no real reason to do that right now. Players have been spotted from Get Right. He's going to pull himself back, looking for the spray through the smoke. Can he get anything done? Yes, he can. First kill goes down, he gets traded out though. That's going to be the bomb planted on B. Alf is so low though. In fact, they haven't managed to get the bomb down just yet. They're trying to bring out some CTs, that weapon switch at the worst possible moment. Now Gift Wraps God sent a player advantage and the bomb planted. Yeah, that's not good whatsoever. That was so unfortunate for Freiburg. It seemed like he was going to find that kill out before he fell down. Perfect timing for Godsent, and now a dire situation for NFP. Pop Flash to help his teammate get out. He's just trying to make something happen. He's going to get that first kill. They have spotted out a second as well, but it's being played so nicely by Twist. The op rings true. Pronax does fall down to a one-on-one, -on -one, but Twist is going to get away with the AWP, and it's impossible now for Exist. He's got to fall away. Two rounds in overtime for Godset. And this is the punish. In overtime, the economy of NIP is shattered. Yeah, as you mentioned before, a couple of plays around the zero dollar mark. So now coming into this round, we're going to see a poor buy as we saw in the last round of the uh, regulation time. NIP could be trailing 3-0 at the end of this overtime. That is a rough ass. Yeah, and what exactly are they going to... Oh, we, we saw them with a desperate buy at the end of regulation, obviously, to force overtime. At least this time they do have Pit with the AWP, but two SMGs. NIP in a de or desperate spot here at the end of this first half of overtime. Pit not taking this duel quite yet. He did get to this spot late. There's the pop flash. That's going to allow him to peak. Nice teamwork from NIP, just ensuring that Pit would be able to get the, get the angle. Such few grenades for NIP to play with, though. Just a couple smokes and incendiary. So once they have expended those, Gonna have to come down to the raw fragging power from NIP. Godsent knows this. They've only used about two flashbangs. Only, only two grenades have been used so far. There's the third. I mean, they're, they're just knowing that every time they use one, NIP has to, and it's just gonna trade these off, and NIP's the one who's gonna be worse for wear afterwards. Get right towards the center bomb site. He has the CZ. He does have a teammate with him just because he doesn't have an arsenal to hold off any kind of a hit. But that's gonna spread the defense thin outside. Thinly spread indeed. Two players situated around Ivy, although it's just Exist who's going to have his sights on it right now as the push comes through. He's going to pick it up for himself and AK traded out as well, just to make matters a little bit better for NIP. That's going to alleviate a lot of the pressure. But they still have to contend with four more Godsend players with much better weapons than theirs, including a double orb setup. Just the CZ still in the hands of Get Right, who's still on the B side. Flash comes through, no follow up from NIP. 25 seconds to play with though. This is getting too close for comfort for Godsend. Yeah, look at the rotation, the read from NIP, because there's a flanker coming in. So they have four members at the center bomb site. This is going to alleviate all the problems they have with their arsenal. Get right, gets that first kill, picks up the AK, can't get anything else, but Twist has one. Exist is here, but he's missed his kill. The time's running down. All the meanwhile, kills are traded. Bomb has to get planted, but Forrest is going to clean it out. NIP, again, a desperate buy situation, and they get the round. It gives him a window of opportunity into the second half of overtime.
The second time God sent have been against a really like close to buying. They've been unable to convert it. Just getting picked off. Very well played from an IP, but God sent. I mean, this they, they should be their map. We shouldn't be in this situation right now. So through onto the second half of overtime, an IP trail by one round, but it's through on the T side where they started things so well. That being said, are we going to see the double op setups coming on on the CT side from Godsent? As uh, you mentioned before, it, it's very flaky when it comes to the economy in overtime for CTs. I highly doubt it. That is a big risk to come out with a double op on the first round of overtime. We might see it if Lecker is able to get out of this round. If Godsent win this and get up towards 18 and he keeps his AWP, then I imagine Lecro and Schneider would pick up another one for that next round, where you could be a little bit more freewheeling with the money. NIP with an execute. This is much faster paced than we were used to seeing them in the first half. Yeah, trying to take a leaf out of the playbook of Godsent, who did this time and time again. It's mainly Schneider that pushed through, one for one trade. Speaking of the man, he has got a kill and falls down afterwards. He's been a big player. Pronax through the smoke, spraying down onto Pit. He went for that plant before the rest of his team could help him out. There is a lone ninja pushing up through Ivy. Maybe he's not required Freiburg entries to perfection onto Pronax. Bomb dropped. He can go ahead and pick this up for himself, though. No CTs will stop him planting either. So, NIP have the chance to stop this retake now. This is a very odd oh, twist. This spot, this could be heartbreaking for NIP. Freiburg just has that feeling that it might come into place. Holding the angle, Twist wins the battle anyways. Big kill, Forrest responds though, Lecro is down, the AWP is out of play. Two on two situation. Smoke is gonna try and cover off the back halls and that's a nice damage on the get right. He's down to 12 HP. Oh, now he's the only remaining NIP player. He's been picked off from Pauf. The Molly did connect though. This is gonna be very close actually. Oh. This is very, very close. They have to go back in, going for the defuse. Do they have it in time though? Yes, they do, but just about. Jeez. He, even, some... he times that so well, steps into the fire at the end, even burns for a couple seconds before it finally goes away. But there it is, map point for Godsent. And there's the kill from Twist. You're talking about the heartbreaking moment. And then gets a second onto Forest as well. 18 to 16, two more map points for Godsent now. He also dinked Get Right from far away. Yeah. That was, I mean, that was a big flank from Twist. Wins him that round, forces Get Right to be passive, and forces him to use that Molotov instead of actually taking a fight. So NIP now, look uh -oh. at this, oh, more aggression out of Godsent. What a ballsy play, they want to take this map, they want to take this win, but it's been spotted out. They might want to fall back now that it's been seen. Yeah, we've seen those kind of pushes through Ivy, but that's the first time we've seen it in box holes. Up the ramp, Pronax meanwhile is going to get a move on. Round the back, NIP have no idea what's coming at them. And when that kill goes down, yes, they got the bomb planted, but it's gone completely awry everywhere else. Connector is going to see Exist getting picked off. There's Schneider. And unless Pick can pull off a 1v5 and stop this bomb from being defused, Godsent are going to take us to Mirage. Pick's going to go for the peak. He gets picked off, and Godsent will take us to map three. Godsent hold on miraculously, and we are going to see in overtime them take map two. We will be going to Mirage in this semi-final. We will be seeing a third map. Unbelievable. I honestly thought when we went to overtime that again that experience would come out ahead for NIP that Godsent may very well just rue their opportunities, but anything but the case. We're seeing this Godsent team really, really grow up and get a lot of experience throughout this tournament, and that time, no mistakes. Saw a couple on Cobble that were a little bit heartbreaking down the stretch, but this time they hold strong, and they're the ones making the play in crunch time. I mean, that was... A really, really nice performance from an NIP that has looked strong on the train in this tournament. Now, across the Mirage, this, this is going to be the most <laughs> nerve-wracking map for, for Godsend. This is their chance to go through to the finals. Yeah, and you almost feel like you have to throw everything out when it's a Swedish versus Swedish battle. You, you almost have to throw everything you know about these teams on Mirage and just know that this is going to be a duel. Both maps have been close. That map, the last map of this series to decide who will go to the grand finals of DreamHack Masters Malmo will be coming up. We're going to take a quick break, but stay tuned.